They told me that I was going to have to live like this for the rest of my life. But I couldn't understand. I'm like, okay, I get it. I had a complication with my surgery. That mm -hmm. happens. But you're going to tell me that at the time I'm 35 years old and this is going to be my life for the rest of my life. There's no reason I can't really make the connection that one complication from my surgery is just going to unleash all of these other problems that I've actually already had underlying my whole life. But now it's just like it's all just kind of came to a head. So that's what sparked my interest to go find the root cause. Hello, everyone. Adam with Carnivore today. So happy that you're joining us. And today we have a very special guest. Angela Christine. So Angela, for those that don't know you, can you kind of introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Hi, Adam. It's so nice to connect with you today. And thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your podcast and share my story with your guests. Um, my journey, you know, really has just been a pretty wild, wild time. I've been on the carnivore diet for three years now, a little over three years, but I'm a 10-year breast cancer survivor, and I've also battled chronic Lyme disease for the last 30 years, uh, but I actually didn't really get diagnosed until three years ago when I lost my ability to digest any fruits, vegetables, or starches, and I was primarily plant-based. Um, that was the direction I went in once I received my diagnosis of breast cancer, and that was what my doctors told me to do. So I went through a major transformation of healing with the carnivore diet, and I also am a holistic practitioner, and I've had my practice for um, nearly 10 years, and it's actually been my greatest tool, the carnivore diet has been my greatest tool in helping my clients get well as well. So it's been an amazing time of turning my pain into purpose and turning my mission into movement of helping other people's people thrive and finding wellness within my own journey to help them with theirs. Wow, that's awesome. I love that. So the carnivore diet has played a big role in your life, at least recently. So let's rewind back to your initial uh, health mysteries that you had. And from based on what you've told me, you, you didn't really know exactly what was wrong with you. So what kind yeah. of signs and symptoms were you having that you didn't really understand what was going on yeah. back early on? I mean, I have sometimes go on a little bit of a tangent, so I'm going to try to condense it just a little bit. Um, but basically, my whole life, I was very sick. I think I've been sick I'm 39 now, <laughs> and I think I've been sick for 39 years. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, really, I've been doing worldly. I've been doing so much better on carnivore that it's amazing once you feel healthy. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, this is what truly really, what this is what health feels like, because I've had <laughs> over 30 years of just feeling OK, feeling well enough or feeling good enough to do the things that I would like to do, but never really good enough to do the things that all the things that I could do or needed to do. Um, I just, my whole, from childhood, I've always had weird digestive issues. Um, I've had weird, you know, pains in my body, like stomach pains chronic strep throat, chronic respiratory issues, chronic sinus issues, chronic brain fog, fatigue. I mean, you name it. I, there was, I had it. You name the antibiotic, I was on it. Um, I didn't really go to school much because I was always sick. And, you know, doctors never really pinpointed it with any special diagnosis other than just, you know, she has bronchitis, oh, she's got strep throat, oh, she's got hormonal issues, you know, and every time they found a, a symptom with a new diagnosis, they never found the root cause. It was just another, another medication to band-aid the issue. And then we just mm -hmm. would move on. Not knowing that all of these medications they were giving me were just 
you know, destroying my immune system even more. So, you know, fast forward to I'm 28 years old and I'm having more mysterious health issues because, you know, like I'd wax and wane. and I grew up in rural Pennsylvania and then I moved to Los Angeles when I was 18. I felt pretty good when I was living in LA, probably because I got out of the environment that I was in. Um, but then, you know, just like everything else, college got stressful. I was partying up all night. Cascade of effects of stress. <laughs> right. And more, right. You know, you not eating, you know, eating a college student diet. Um, <laughs> which by the way, I did Atkin my first, my first couple months of college. Didn't realize that's probably why I felt so good. Because <laughs> basically all I was eating was meat. Um but didn't know. I was like literally like living off of like meat and eggs and um my roommate's parents thought we were crazy. And so then of course, you know, we're kids, we can't really exactly like stick to it. But I will say I felt really good then and now I know why. Um and then uh yeah, so then you know, fast forward to I'm twenty eight years old, more mysterious illness you know, illnesses come up, not understanding why I'm so sick all the time. And found out I had breast cancer um, at the same time of that diagnosis, just like three months before then, I was also diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder in my esophagus called eosinophilic esophagitis. Basically, every time I was eating, my throat was, was closing up and my, my food would get constriction and basically it's from um, inflammation, you know, and that's inflammation fed my breast cancer. So, um, once I, and for me, the breast cancer was, was at least it was, it was detected early on, but it was still very aggressive. So instead of doing chemo, um, and radiation, I, I actually wasn't a candidate, um, for like a lumpectomy or anything like that. So I actually had to get a full mastectomy and then, um, once I had that mastectomy and then I had implants put in, that cascaded more issues. So my doctors were insistent that I went on an anti-inflammatory diet, which, which considered mainly plants. Um, if I wanted to eat meat, I could only eat a like palm. I would, they'd say like, what's the palm size of poultry or turkey since I'm I've been allergic to fish my entire life. Um, so actually, the only time I've ever had seafood was when I've tried it and have gone into anaphylactic. So we just don't, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, I uh, was only allowed to have like a very small amount of chicken or turkey, um, one egg, one or two eggs a week max. But the rest of my diet was mainly just um, legumes, chickpeas, lentils, black beans, and a lot of vegetables and plant protein powders and smoothies. I mean, like if it came from a garden, I put it in my food. I, um, and I thought I was doing the right thing. I think 99% of the carnivores like that have come into this way of eating thought we were doing the right thing. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Living in Los Angeles, I had access to some really great farmers markets that didn't do didn't use any pesticides or, um, or harsh chemicals on their plants. So I was really guided to eat this way. And um, in addition to my healing, I was getting really into my spiritual practices and using energy work such as Reiki to help my body heal and send vegan diets are really, you know, that are really common in the spiritual community, I felt even more <laughs> um, convinced that I needed to have, so, you know, to eat this way, to have plants in my diet, more plants in my diet. It's like, you know, the more the better. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, I was just getting more inflamed. And I started getting really terrible hives all the time 
And of course, everybody's like, oh, you're detoxing. It's your, de it's your detoxing from everything. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm going into anaphylaxis. This was like round one, you know, like having anaphylaxis and having heart palpitations. Um, it was it was really scary. And nobody likes going into the emergency room or nearly going into the emergency room on a daily basis when yeah. from, wow. from eating vegetables. And so that was probably one of the most terrifying times of my life. <laughs> Um, but I eventually did, I started, you know, it was funny cause like I started learning about like whole 30 and paleo. So I started like upping my meat and I noticed a significant improvement, but then, um, and I did that for a couple of months and then like that, that brain inside of me was like, this is too much meat. I can't do this. <laughs> so then I went back. I went back to my mostly plant-based ways and then just like everything else I started going through that vicious cycle of having wow. um, reactions again and not feeling not feeling my best so it's just been a it's been an interesting journey of that and then to finally you know fast forward I had a after the like five years after um, I had started my practice and, you know, got through the breast cancer stuff. Um, I had a, a surgery because I found out that I had a, um, a rib that was compressing my brachial plexus nerve and my subclavian artery. And I had to have this top rib removed. And it, that surgery, I almost died from the complication that led to it. And... I Goodness. think maybe if I was eating more meat at the time, maybe it, maybe I would have not had that issue. But um, I ended up having like a collapsed lung. And when I got home from the surgery, I was passing out and fainting all the time. And I was still on my plant-based diet. And it I was going to the neurologist and getting in and out of the hospital, started having my anaphylactic reactions. And it was a nightmare. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So instead of finding the root cause, they just diagnosed me with every neurological condition under the sun. They took my driver's license away. Um, they told me I had narcolepsy. I had POTS. So it's POTS is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. They diagnosed me with autonomic dysfunction, vasovagal syncope, um, mast cell activation syndrome. Um, some of them even said I may have uh, Ehlers-Dahlers syndrome, but they couldn't confirm that because there's no actual blood test. Um, I was also diagnosed with gastroparesis. Um, and I'm sure there's others. I just can't think of them off the top of my head, but those were the main ones. And um, they just, they told me that I was going to have to live like this for the rest of my life. And um, I just, but I couldn't understand. I'm like, okay, I get it. I had a complication with my surgery. That mm -hmm. happens. But you're going to tell me that I'm at the time, I'm 35 years old, and this is going to be my life for the rest of my life. There's no reason we can't, I can't really make the connection that one complication from my surgery is just going to unleash all of these other problems that I've actually already had underlying my whole life. But now it's just like, it's all just kind of came to a head. So that's what sparked my, um, sparked my interest to go find the root cause. Because wow. here I am also at the same time, I'm a holistic practitioner, right? And I've been like, I've been helping people with a lot of these issues because I've gotten through them myself. And but why is it that everything that I know to work, why is it not working? Why is it not working for me? Like this is all the these are all the tools I have in my toolbox. If I can't get myself well, like it actually started making me question myself. Like, am I? How can I lead my clients? <laughs> how can I improve my credibility if this is like if everything I know is is not working and you know, it was a whole, it wasn't so, it was like a, a whole spiral of a domino effect of 
feel like I failed myself, but like now I feel like I'm failing everybody else too. And so, right. um, you know, I, I ended up just, it was like an emergency situation. I immediately found somebody to rent my, my place out in LA. And I said, I have to go home to Pennsylvania and just like intuitively felt in my heart that I had to go, if I wanted to find the root cause of what was causing this, I got to go to the roots, my roots. My roots are in Pennsylvania. So I felt just spiritually connected to go to the root of where I came from to find the root of my problem. And, and sure enough, one night, um, went the first night that I got there, um, it was New Year's, I got, I flew in New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. I'm making my mom and I dinner and it was, I was eating a pork, I made us like pork chop and lots of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were eating and I went into, you know, anaphylaxis number, number 2000, you know, oh, and um, just happened a friend called my mom at the time. And it was like, you know, wanted to make sure that I came in safely. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I can't talk to you right now because Andal is having a reaction. I think we might have to go to the hospital. And the first thing he said to her was, has she doesn't ever checked for Lyme disease or co-infection. And meanwhile, my mother is screaming this to me while I'm stabbing myself with an EpiPen and taking a shot of Benadryl and asking me if I've ever been tested for this. And you know, that was, I wish I could have taken a video of that because I think I'd actually laugh about that right now. All right. Um, <laughs> so, Chaos. so we ended up finding, you know, like I ended up calling my doctor in LA and I said, can you please send me a you know, test for Lyme disease now? Now, mind you, it was three weeks of me arguing with him because I didn't believe that it could be Lyme disease. I didn't understand the complexities that Lyme disease had. And he sat with me and looked at like all my medical like records and stuff. Cause he also had been, has been dealing with Lyme disease for about 15 years. So he, if anybody's going to recognize a symptom, it's him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't know that Lyme disease, you know, you could have it in your system your entire life and have multiple um like autoimmune issues but again didn't know autoimmune issues in the 90s and the 80s like we didn't really have that and i was you know pretty much grew up eating a standard american diet so ooh, like it wasn't a thing but i just don't think it was it was really it wasn't really commonly looked at back then even though it should have been and mm -hmm. now i learned that pennsylvania is actually the number one state in the country for it and it's an opportunistic bacterial infection that can come out of, you know, come in and out of hiding your whole entire life when it only just takes, you know, several major stresses, sometimes just even one, to create a huge activation in the body. And that's why so many people now are getting diagnosed with it, um, with other major symptoms like lupus, MS. You know, our two are the two greatest imitators of Lyme disease, Parkinson's. Um, what is it? The Bell's palsy. You know, those are all Lyme disease. You know, not all, but they are have a very strong connection to it. Also, rheumatoid arthritis is also a strong connection to Lyme disease. So, well. um, I've learned so much throughout this journey, but. You know, and Lyme affects everybody differently, but for me, it affected my, you know, my neurological body, you know, my neurological system. So once I finally got diagnosed, my, I finally saw a, um, a doctor, like a Lyme literate medical doctor, and he just looked at me and he's like, I can't treat you because you are so sick and there's nothing I could give you right now that would make you better. And he's like, you're too underweight because um, I dropped down to 89 pounds because at this point I was going into anaphylaxis so much that I could only eat a couple bites before reacting. So my nervous system was completely dysregulated 
from this disease. And then also because I wasn't giving it proper nutrition, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so between that and then, um, because I was so reactive, I couldn't take an herb. I couldn't take a med like an antibiotic. And because I was so, so late getting diagnosed, um, that my, my doctor said, you know, you're, you're not even a candidate for antibiotics because they won't work for you. You just, you've had this infection for so long. And then I also got diagnosed with Babesia and Bartonella shortly after that. And, but I actually, in order just to get the Lyme diagnosis, I had to lie to my doctor in California because he wouldn't test me because he said it didn't exist there. And every single one of my doctors, like my neuro, my, or my neurologist, my cardiologist, my gastro doctors, I asked them all the same question, why they never thought to check me for Lyme. And they all said the same thing that they didn't, it doesn't exist here. So we don't test for it. Wow. Yeah. As yes. if people can't move across state lines. Right. You know? Like it's like we all are just born and raised in California and we never leave. Um, and so it was through this journey of like at the same time as I was getting this diagnosis, I was also in all of the forums like in like histamine intolerance, mass cell forums on Facebook. And people kept saying the carnivore diet, carnivore diet. And I was already on like a low histamine paleo diet. Well, I thought it was low histamine, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that even meat can be high in histamine if you're not forcing it. If you're super sensitive, like I was, that you had to order it from a non-aged source. So that's when I started really studying you know, when I was, I started really understanding, I was like, you know what, this kind of makes sense because I remember that short blip I did doing whole 30 for a couple of months. And I was like, you know, I did actually feel better, but I just couldn't wrap my head around not eating plants. So I went back to my plant-based ways and then having this, um, you know, these reactions to plants, I started understanding that, okay, well, you know, Maybe it started out as histamine, but because I was also being exposed to mold, my body also started reacting to salicylates and oxalates. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand, but I, like, at the time I was like, this, you know, it was like mind blowing to me that, oh my gosh, these defense chemicals that are so called supposed to help our bodies heal are actually just attacking me. Like. They're just wiping right. my body out. My body can't handle these chemicals. My body can't even absorb what's going in. And they, um, the my gastro doctor wanted to put me on TPN, and you know he, uh, like referred me to a nutritionist, and they were gonna do a feeding tube. They tried to get me to, you know, do all of these things and I'm like you don't understand it's I am not a, I, I am not the problem isn't that I don't want to eat I, I actually love food I love eating you know that's not the issue you don't need to teach me mm -hmm. how to eat um the problem is I, I every time I eat I am having a visceral like allergic response and I want to know why <laughs> and that's how I you know I found out it was Lyme and then from there I found a source of non-aged meats from a company called Billy Doe Meats. Um, they're in Illinois. And I found them after calling like 500 farms or more in across America. Yeah. Um, I went on that site, Eat Wild. And uh, there's Eat Wild. And there's another site. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But um a local farmer gifted me this book. It was like a Weston A. Price catalog. And in the back mm -hmm. had the, you know, Wild Living Farms website on it. And I went on there and I literally just went through like alphabet, like the whole alphabet and found, I found Billy Doe, but I went through so many, you know, I was like, I was like, what's the A's? And I went to like the end of the alphabet. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I called so many, I was starting to get blurry. And then finally, when I called them, they're like, yeah, we don't age our meat. And you know, we actually work with a lot of carnivores that have autoimmune issues. And I just, 
clung on to them and they became like family. They became my, I called them my pharmacist <laughs> and they mailed me my, my supplement and I called them my supplements. My, my meat delivery was my medicine. So it was like, I got my medicine every month from my favorite pharmacist, Billy Doe Meats. And, <laughs> um, I only consumed their meats for, you know, two and a half years. I, I still mainly consume their meats 98% of the time, but I was so strict with eating them and them only. And like my whole body completely changed. Um, I stopped going into anaphylaxis. Um, one of my major wow. symptoms was also I was passing out. I'd pass out like 15 times a day um, before my diagnosis. And, you know, like that's when they took my driver's license away from me. And that's when they diagnosed me with basovagal syncope and POTS because I was passing out so much and I had to teach my dog how to, how to like, to walk me. They, they wanted to give me, that was the other thing. The doctors wanted to give me a walker and I refused to be using a walker. I did not want my brain to depend on that. So I just mm -hmm. got my dog a service dog vest and I trained him how to, how to be my service dog. So, um, but it's between from where I was then to where I am now has just been such a beautiful journey, painful too, but, but beautiful to see how much my diet, even though I've had to do other things to eradicate the infection. I couldn't mm -hmm. even eradicate the infection or do anything until my body was more nutritionally supported and metabolically healthy. And that I will credit the carnivore diet. Like I will give all of my credit to the carnivore diet because of just how much that like just eating enough meat and saturated fats and the, you know, organ in the organ meats and just helped my body heal, not just physically, but, you know, emotionally, spiritually as well. Wow. That's incredible. That's a huge testament to, you know, meat is medicine and food is medicine in general. So let's rewind a little bit and go back to, you had this issue with your rib and that sort of just, it was a discovery in a sense of all these autoimmune conditions that you had underlying most likely for a good portion of your life. Yeah. And then that led to this discovery of Lyme disease. So once you were tested for that and were diagnosed with it, what was the next steps? What did the healthcare system tell you that you needed to do in order to correct that? So that's when I found out that I could not, I could not treat. And that's when my doctor just kind of looked at me and he's like, you need to figure out a way to get healthy. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's why I'm here. Well, he <laughs> left it on you? Yeah. I, he said that I was just too sick there because he's like, antibiotics are going to kill you. Herbs might kill you. I don't want to be responsible for killing you. And I said, I, I, oh my gosh. I said, I respect that. And then he wanted me to see this other doctor to do ozone treatments. But mm -hmm. I, being that I've been in, in Pennsylvania, I'm in a very small rural mountain town in the country. And so where he wanted me to go for ozone treatments, like almost like a, it was like two and a half hour drive three times a week. And that treatment was going to be like 10 grand. And I didn't have anybody to take me to those appointments. I mean, it was, I'm like, that's a lot. So I actually ended up finding a local naturopath who also went through Lyme disease and through her. And she had just opened up her practice a month after I saw him. Mm -hmm. And so I started seeing her doing and like learning how to detox my body. And I told her about, okay, well, I'm, I'm going on this carnivore diet. I've only, I'm, I've only started it. You know, it's only been a couple of weeks. And at first she didn't agree with it, but we actually understood, you know, that I also found out later on that I had a MTHFR variant that 
prevents me from from detoxing well. But really? the cool thing that I was able to, because the you know the one big thing was like, like yo, you can't detox if you're on meat, and you can't go to the bathroom. That's like the big myth. That's the whole. and the first time when I went on when I started my with when I started the carnivore diet, I was like, oh, I went from not being able to go to the bathroom for like two weeks. <laughs> To go in the bathroom every day. I went from having slow no. motility to having regular motility. So that was a big thing. And so she couldn't argue with that. So really? she's like, well, all right. Well, because she, you know, she was like, I think we need to up your fiber. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think fiber has ever been my friend. <laughs> uh, maybe it is for some people, but it has never been for me. Um, right. so what what so, types of things did she do to help you detox? So I did a couple like clay. I did well. I did infrared sauna, and I did bet night clay. That was where we started, and um, that that was about as mo- the most I could I could tolerate at that time was the bet night clay. Um, I've never been a really great uh, candidate for any type of herbal supplements, so I, um, I've never actually done any herbs. We did, so I, I mainly focused on on detoxing. I used, and I used a couple of different methods to detox. So I worked with her. I also worked with a bioresonant uh, practitioner. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with bioresonant, but it's mm-hmm. like a, uh, they, you take like a DNA swab of your, of your mouth, or you could use your hair or your nails, and they run it, um, they run on a frequency machine and it'll tell you what um what's coming up like and i'll be honest that machine was just as accurate as all of my blood tests and it's pretty wild and so actually the same i had started working with her um before i got diagnosed or before i had my blood tests And it was funny because she, the same day that my blood test came in positive, I was on the phone with her and she was telling me that, you know, she's like, well, Lyme is coming up on your frequency. I was like, really? No way. And then I got this like email on my phone came in. I was like, oh, my labs just came in. So I'm on the phone with her while she's telling me this and I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, oh my God, my labs are coming and everything you're telling me right now is literally right here in front of me. So I worked with her and she was able to do some really cool uh, frequency drops in water where I would, um, where she would, like, she basically could run the frequency of the machine with my frequencies and I would take these drops. Like, it was like basically like a, a homeopathy type of medicine. Um, mm-hmm. And then the rest was up to me. So that's when I really got into, you know, well, this was all the, the rest of it was all stuff that I had already knew in my toolbox. So between the diet and doing some detoxing and learning a little bit more about frequency, I was doing my own like meditation, working through trauma, doing a lot of the um, grounding, spending time in nature, sunlight, balancing my circadian rhythms. And just resting and just allowing my body the space to surrender and heal. And I also did um, pulse electromagnetic frequency machines that I would use at my chiropractor. I also did chiropractic work, cranial sacral work, Reiki, and, you know, anything that I could do. Acupuncture, too, was another really great one. And uh, massage. So any type of self-care I could do was what I was really just, I, I really prided myself on, especially the first six months. Um, and then from there, I went back to LA and I, I started to see a, I saw a biological dentist um, and her name is Dr. Sanda. She's amazing. She's in Beverly Hills. I will shout her out on this podcast because she specializes in Lyme disease and um, she just, she, she gets it 
And I swear that woman saved my life. Um, because when I, you know, was like, well, okay, I'm doing all of these things and things are working, but there's something, you know, there was something that I was learning about, you know, my journey was that our health starts in our mouth. So each of our teeth are connected to a different energy meridian. And I, something that I learned was that I had wisdom teeth removed. And Mm -hmm. when you are dealing with a bacterial and a major bacterial infection, such as Lyme, when you get these wisdom teeth removed, even though the gum line grows over, you know, after you get it extracted, there are still holes in the jaw bones. And so she did a co- like a 3D cone beam scan and she found that I had cavitations, which were like these deep bacterial pockets in my, in my mouth. And then mm. we found out that one of my, I had one root canal that was, that was infected. And like, ironically, a couple months after I saw her, I was planning on getting this cavitation surgery to clean out these pockets. And the infected root canal came out of my mouth. And so I was living. So this is funny. This is crazy. So it was covered in black mold. Then wow. found out that I was living in this house with my, with my ex-boyfriend. I, was, I moved in with him. And I had like my practitioner room, which is, is terrible. But we had, we didn't. We didn't know we had a lot of water damage in the house until um, he had to sell the house. And then we found that there was water damage in the house. But the worst room in the entire house was my Reiki room, my my treatment Mm -hmm. room. And from being in that room, breathing it in, it colonized in this tube. And so to see that tooth, my doctor just looked at it. And she's like, I don't know how you're alive. Like, you must have like 20. Like, do you, how many lives do you have? Because this tooth was black and covered <laughs> in mold. And wow. then we removed that. She cleaned that out. And that's why she likes, she really saved my life. Because I think that that's why, you know, it was just a combination between the surgery, the, the, the like underlying lime being exposed to mold that I didn't even know that I was being exposed to it colonizing in my mouth. And then as we all know, you know, infections that start in the mouth can go right down into our heart, right into our bloodstream. So, um, you know, it it could have been really, really bad. And then once Mm -hmm. I finally got the results from the cavitation surgery, that my bacteria was off the charts. So that was a huge proponent to my healing. And then a few months later, I was able to come back to Pennsylvania. And mind you, I stayed on the carnivore diet the entire time. Like I was, you know, really stayed focused on my diet. Cause honestly, I don't think I could have handled, I don't think I would have been able to get through this if I didn't. And, um, even though it was difficult, I still, I still maintained it. And then I came mm-hmm. back to, to Pennsylvania and started my treatments and I treated for an entire year and detoxed. And I, you know, cause I also had like to finish like detoxing the mold where I had to treat the Babesia, the Lyme, the Bartonella. And then I finished treatments about a year ago. And now I'm just, I'm working with a SIRS doctor, a chronic inflammatory response syndrome doctor. I don't know if you've heard of SIRS, but Mm-hmm. because of all of the the issues that I've had with my immune system I am being I'm just working with with her basically just we're we're just continuing to detox my body but the good thing is is that she has been really respectful of like what I know and working with my body so I'm She's basically just kind of monitoring me and I'm treating myself. <laughs> That's awesome. And my, like my, my TGF beta one, my C3A and my C4A are actually finally in range. So again, 
she's a big proponent of the lion diet. She's a really big kid. Like she, she actually, um, she worked with Judy Cho. So she's an amazing yeah. doctor and she really believes in it. And that's why I actually chose her. Cause I thought, well, I need to work with a doctor that understands the carnivore diet and the importance of it. <laughs> Speaking of that. So how much do you feel like diet played a role in your recovery in, in overall? Was it like 50%, 80%, 10%? 90%. Wow. Because I had to heal on this diet when nothing else. You know, like my diet got me to a place of being able to do everything else. Like, I don't think I could have been able to detox or to even take my treatments if I didn't get well enough to take them. So that's why I really give the diet so much credit, even though the treatments and everything was, was difficult. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't have the proper support of just being grounded in like proper protein and proper nutrition, like my body wouldn't have been able to handle it. And I don't think I would have actually made it through my, through my treatment successfully. Well, that's incredible. I love that. So when you transitioned from plant-based to carnivore, did you see any kind of issues or problems in that regard? Um, I did a little bit in the beginning. Like I would, I kind of did it a little slowly. Um, I wouldn't say it was more of a problem. Like, I don't know if it was like a more of a problem, but I think it was more of a mental problem <laughs> than anything. <laughs> yeah. Like from a girl who went from eating so many vegetables and just loved her vegetables. Like I didn't really care so much about fruit, but man, you know, I could binge on vegetables. You know, I'd just sit there with a pan of roasted Brussels sprouts. I mean, and whatever else you'd put on. I mean, I'd just sit there all day and eat them. Um and then nobody wanted to be next to me for like a week, but it's a <laughs> <laughs> um, but I noticed that I had to like I would go slowly, so I would I I find I was only at that point I was only down to maybe like three vegetables I could tolerate, which were um, like cabbage, Brussels sprouts, and um, like rutabagas. That was kind of it. And then I could eat white rice. And so occasionally a green bean or a zucchini, but that they weren't the best, but that was like something that I could tolerate. So again, I was, tr I was trying to find a balance, but I noticed that when I would have my, I would do it. So in the beginning, it was like, I would do like one meal, one meal a day where I would just be carnivore. You know, and it was lion diet because I was I'm, I'm like, I couldn't have eggs. So I healed on just ruminant meat. I had to eliminate, you know, I never really, I haven't eaten eggs since 2017. And well, well I had, why is that? Um, eggs just were, start, I guess maybe because they were, I, I didn't know that I had a histamine issue. And so every time I was eating them, they would always just kind of go right through me. And I would get like mm -hmm. really bad, like stomach aches and bloating. So I just stopped. It didn't matter if I was getting them pasture raised or organic. It was just a constant thing. And I'll never forget. There was a couple of times when I was in the middle of working on somebody and I had to run to the bathroom and I felt so embarrassed. So I said, you know what? Never again. I can't do this. This is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to eat them anymore. Um, so I went, you know, so when I started this diet, I was, I was noticing that when I was eating chicken, that would, you know, I was eating a lot of chicken, but I always, it didn't feel so great afterwards. So mm -hmm. then I started, you know, and like I said, and then the, the pork, I was eating the pork chop and had that anaphylactic reaction. And at that time I couldn't figure out if it was the pork string beans like what it was because having mast cell activation syndrome you can react to anything but whenever mm -hmm. i'd have a reaction it would just scare me to ever eat that food again so i just kind of go into like that no bank so um 
So I stopped eating pork and then I felt like I shouldn't be eating pork or chicken. The more I studied how, you know, they're monogastric animals and how they can be very inflammatory. So I just stopped eating them and I just stuck to billy dough meats, which was, um, which is lamb, veal, goat, and, um, yeah, lamb, veal, goat, and, um, their, their beef occasionally. And then I could handle venison. Um, I didn't really eat a lot of beef the beginning of my healing, I mainly just stick to lamb and goat and veal just because it was easier for my body to digest. Um, but as I started, as I got well, I incorporated more beef. And um, and then I also just eat a lot of venison just because being in Pennsylvania, I have access to it because a lot of my friends are hunters and love to uh, give me some of their meat when they, when they go hunting. That's awesome. Yeah. Good friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel very blessed and when it comes to good friends, especially when it comes to my friends that love to hunt because I have a chest freezer full of venison right now and I feel very, very blessed and very fortunate. <laughs> That's awesome. So you've had all of these issues, you know, you've gone on the carnivore diet now, you've gotten rid of the, the plants and uh, you're feeling better. So in terms of how you actually feel like today, mm -hmm. Um, you know, wh wh what's your condition now? In terms of, well, my condition is that I'm, I'm in remission. Um, okay. I still, I've been, to be honest, like I still sometimes will have a flare up, but it's not because of anything other than the environment um, that I'm in. If I have, like, for example, this past week, actually, my mom, I've been staying with my mom until I go back to LA. Um, but she had a leak, uh, an exhaust leak in her furnace and we just started getting, we've had some cold weather. So I was exposed to some carbon monoxide and that kind of put me into a flare up. So, um, so that was a little, a little scary, but I, aside from that, <laughs> I've been I've been feeling pretty energized, been pretty resilient, feeling pretty resilient. And I was really surprised how quickly uh, my body, even though it has been like when it does go through major stresses, how quickly I respond and come out of it. So I am still oh. healing some like inflammatory stuff just from the mold that I was in. And, you know, I've been, you know, having to detox that still out of my body. But I feel like I, you know, it's like I still feel like I, like I feel like a human again. You know, like I feel full of life. I feel full of just like energy again, and that's something that I'm so appreciative and so grateful for because it's something that I don't think I've ever truly felt my entire life. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, I, I'm sort of a similar path with you. Not not nearly as bad, but I, you know, trying to figure out things and going to the lion diet, to try to pare things down and really get to the root and cause of the issues. I think I'm going to be going and getting some blood work and things like that done next and testing, uh, especially for mold and stuff like that. Because I don't know, it's it's something is still there, is still lingering, and uh, yeah. I do feel like overall my health is you know ninety percent better than what it was. But there's just still something there that I notice so much more now because of the way that I eat that I never noticed before. So yes, yes, and that's the thing. Like I think because of how clean my diet is, is that when I'm in a flare up, I can I can identify it. Like I can identify when I'm not well. Whereas before, I was just always had that low level of inflammation or maybe even high levels of inflammation going on in my body. So if something attacked it, I wouldn't have any awareness that there was an invader or a pathogen in my body. You know, mm -hmm. it was just kind of like, oh, I maybe don't feel as well today, but I would never put it into like, oh, like there is something tangible here and now i can actually identify i can feel it when it when it comes in 
And I know that it needs to be addressed and I can address it rather than just, you know, mask it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's almost a great feeling. It's not because you're having issues, but it's also a great feeling because you can identify those issues and work on a solution now. Yes. Whereas before, it's, I have no idea what's going on. I just feel bad. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I think that the one thing about having an autoimmune issue like this, like any type of issue, is you become your own doctor. You become your own advocate. And so it's like you really get to know your body. And that was something that when I was going through this, I transformed my whole practice. And, you know, it was one thing in the beginning was like, oh, I'm here to help my clients heal. And now I'm on the other side where I'm like, no, I'm not here to help my clients heal. I'm here to help my clients heal themselves. I want my clients mm -hmm. to learn who they are, learn about themselves, know who they are, know themselves enough to know how to heal themselves. So that's where, where my mission is now. It's not so much to help you heal, but to help you Love heal that. yourself. Yeah. So let's, let's uh, hit on that topic. So is that your full-time job is coaching? Yeah. 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 Okay. I've had it for, I've been doing it for, I guess, nearly 10 years. Um, wow. It's been the most incredible, incredible journey. I, I was in the fashion industry for 10 years prior. That's actually why I moved to Los mm -hmm. Angeles. I, I went to fashion school and got right into the industry upon graduation and was in that until I was 28 when I started having all these, the, the minor health issues that I had throughout my whole life became major health issues when I was 27, but finally didn't get an accurate diagnosis until I was 28. And then breast cancer changes you. I mean, any disease changes you, but that was my first major, major disease. And I say disease because to me, any type of illness is a dis-ease to the body. You know, the body comes out of balance. And um, so going through that whole journey of living in a hospital gown, living in the hospital with, you know, losing at that time at 28, you know, you're like, you have to have a mastectomy. You're like, it's just a whole it's a whole thing. It's a very emotional time. Mm -hmm. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, I don't think I could go back into an industry where my whole life depends on what everybody looks like. <laughs> you know, even though I understand yeah. it was like dress, you know, because at that time, you know, I was I was working in a major department store. I was a stylist. Or I, I had my, I was like doing both. I had a like styling business by my, like on my own where I was working with uh, clients privately, but then I also worked with, um, I worked for the store. So I was also doing styling for the store. And I just remember, I mean, my whole, I mean, my whole life depended on making sure that everybody was dressed to their best and wearing the most, you know, I was really into my designer clothes and everything superficial that you could think of right. um and I, I mean i appreciate it i loved fashion i still have a a slight love for it so um but i just remember sitting in the hospital losing my like got, getting ready for my vasectomy and i was just like i just i don't even i can't wait to just be able to wear clothes again like i don't even care what they are i just want out of these hospital gowns and I don't think I can do this anymore and at the same you know around that same time I was at my cancer center and I met a practitioner that did Reiki and mm -hmm. she we had a Reiki circle at my cancer center and that's really where I started to learn about energy um, spirituality you know, connection and how we're all connected to ourselves and our higher selves and, you know, a higher power and how we, if we can channel that 
energy at that high level of frequency, we can heal. And that's really what I tapped into. I started do I started working with her privately every single week. And that practice really changed my life. It opened me up to thinking in a different way. And in a way that I never in ways that like I never thought possible. You know, I really I understood of, that's when I really started to understand about trauma and you know, our nervous system, you know, our, you know, our spiritual beings having a human experience and being, mm -hmm. you know, learning how to be more present with ourselves. And really that's how I learned how to meet myself. And it's truly, it truly changed my life. Uh, especially that's, and once I saw the profound shifts, she ended up, um, I ended up, I remember coming out of a session with her and I just remember looking at her and I was like, I want to do this work. This is my calling. I just felt it. I just channeled it. And so I started doing this work and I, I worked with her. You know, she, she certified me. And I mean, one of the other things that I don't often talk about, but I've been trying to talk about more. Um, I know that not everybody like believes in this stuff, but um, it's I'm very passionate about it. Is that I was born a clairvoyant medium, so ever since I was a child, I always could see things. <laughs> um, I'd always picture things that were going to happen, and then they'd happen. Um, I'd wake up in the oh. middle of the night with like souls on my bed. <laughs> And, you know, it's funny, my mom and I still talk, we're, we're, we're talking about it more now. Um, but it was something that I had my whole entire life. My dad had it as well. And so I didn't know, sometimes I didn't know if it was like, was it just because I wanted to be like my dad was actually having these experiences. But then he passed away unexpectedly when I was nine and I was still having these abilities and I didn't have anybody or any person to talk to about them other than like my two best friends who, who supported me through it, but nobody knew uh, other than them. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until like I got older, I got cancer, like when all of this stuff was starting to come out. And that was one of the things that my practitioner said to me. She's like, you need to use your gifts to help people. It's not just this is that your illness wasn't just about reiki and you know finding yourself through cancer and leaving the fashion industry you had to learn how to use your gifts to help other people and so i remember just saying okay well i will do that <laughs> i don't know how to do this but i will do this and i did and not only did i do that but once i started working with my client i started seeing as i was working with them I started not only building myself up in the in the spiritual community of like, you know, just another practitioner in, in L.A. County that's, you know, doing Reiki and I guess you could say metaphysical work because I was combining mm -hmm. my sessions with stuff that I would see. But then mm -hmm. I started seeing diseases in the body. And that was something that was really profound to me, because even though I'm not a doctor, and I will never claim to be a doctor. I never diagnosed, but I would see stuff come up in my client sessions. And I would say to them, please go to your doctor and have them run X, Y, and Z tests. And let me know what they say, because I'm, 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 this is what I'm getting right now. And they would, and then they'd call me or come back to me and say, my doctor wants to see, like speak to you because he didn't know to test me for this and he wouldn't test me for this. And it was coming back positive, you know, or it was coming back wow. unelevated. So I started building my, my reputation up in the medical community as well as the spiritual community. And I started working alongside some, some doctors that believed in me. Um, and so that's how I really built my practice was on both the spiritual side doing this work to help, you know, with spirituality, um, healing, emotions, 
but then also using energy work to help balance the body. So even if a client had to receive medication, I was able to, you know, this work is so powerful that you could, you know, to help with the energy clearing, you know, you're, you're raising your vibration so that if your body needs to take medication, it can because it's at a grounded state. Um, the only thing that I was missing, other than the fact that I loved to cook at that time and I was plant-based, but I was, you know, telling everybody to be plant-based. That's the word. That's the one mistake. But I mean, like, but you know, and it's funny because it's like they would get better, but they want to get a hundred percent better. But now, um, you know, fast forward these years, I'm still doing what I'm doing. What I'm adding now, now I'm seeing like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I was doing okay, I think before I got sick, but I was still, you know, I was not a hundred percent, you know, I was not my personal hundred percent self because I wasn't giving myself the right foods for my body. And mm -hmm. now that I am, even though I had to take the long way to get there, you know, I was like, could you have not made me go through all of this to get me to carnivore? Like, I would have much rather just started it without without the journey, but but um, I've made it, you know, made it there now, and so a big part of my practice is, you know, an animal based diet. I, I refuse to work with vegans. I just won't because we're not on the same we're not on the same page. I I think that I understand the that there is a conflict, and I would love, and I will sit there, and I will educate somebody and empower them but i have tried to work with vegans and they just don't want to um it's like I, I can't help you heal if you don't want to do the things that you need to do in order for you to heal like you you know if it, like Hippoc hippocrates says if in order for someone to heal you have to make them ask them if they're willing to remove the things that are making them sick and many vegans right. don't agree that the plants are actually what's making them sick. Um, yeah, because their their base uh, reason for doing the vegan diet in most cases is a moral thing for them, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's something that I, you know, I've kind of just said, okay, well, it's just unless you're a vegan coming to me with an open mind and an open heart, um, I'd be glad to. To take on that, um, take on your your case. But if you're just coming to argue with me, then we're just not gonna see eye to eye. So let's just not start something we can't finish. Um, right. So, but yeah, that. But I've had now that I've helped my clients get to that place of some of them, some of them um, that have been, you know, you do like doing the non-age low histamine carnivore diet that are in doing this work with me you know it's been such a profound shift it's like it's amazing because it for me it was the missing tool but to see it with someone else and other people too like you see that it's like i don't know i i just feel like it's like that little you know you see this like this block right and then you just like stick that little piece right in the center and then the whole the, like lights up <laughs> and it's like that little piece just lights that lights like lights up everything and um i just it's like the testimonials that i'm receiving on a weekly basis just bring me to tears and i had a client reach out to me on friday actually right before like right when we started our session you know i called her and or we we started our session and she's like I drove today. I almost dropped wow. the phone. I had to pick it back up. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, I drove today. I was like, well, when was the last time you drove? And she's like, two years. And my heart just wow. stopped because I, I lost my license for a year and a half. So two years not being able to drive and to be able to drive even us, she's like, I didn't drive far. And I go, I don't care if you just drove down the driveway. Like mm -hmm. the fact that you felt confident enough to get behind the wheel. I mean, I was just, you know, praising her so much. And she's incredible because she's another one that she thought she actually had alpha gal um, because she was reacting to beef and she was reacting to 
to meet in general, but I explained to her, I was like, I, I just, you know, again, I'm not a doctor, but as I'm working on her intuitively, I said, I don't know, like, I can't diagnose you that you have or you haven't. She said she had gotten tested and that it came back negative, but she's like, I think I'm just really hyper reactive to everything. And I said, I think your histamine bucket is just so full. Why don't we start you on some non-aged meats and just see how you do? And so she started with goat from Billy Doe and I just told her like to take like a small chunk like I don't want you to do anything major and she's she went from just like be, only being able to tolerate like a small half of a bite to now she's able to eat you know a, a good amount of it and now she's mm-hmm. also eating venison so it's it's like you know everybody's at has to heal at their own pace but it's just so beautiful to see you know, she's just one example. I have several, but she's, she's just, I just talked to her on Friday and I just see her doing the work and showing up for herself. And it's just beautiful to see other people healing on a animal-based carnivore diet and combining that with using energy work. And it's awesome to be able to work with people around the world, not just like in person, but I do all my work over the phone. My, my business is a hundred percent remote. And when I go back to LA, I do see people in person, but, um, there, but for the most part, I, it's all remote. That's awesome. I love that. And the passion that you have for others, I can definitely see it coming through. And you also shared with me before we started this interview about the shirt that you're wearing. So yeah. you're from the fact you're from the fashion industry, totally. but you're wearing a t-shirt. Tell us about that. Yeah. So this is their t-shirt. It says, um, just a girl who loves sunshine and steak. Um, <laughs> so I love that. I my one of my clients and very dear friend. Also, I one thing I love about this community is like my my clients become very dear to me, like friends. And to me, they're more like friends than and family. And he bought me this shirt in gray for my birthday. Well, actually, he bought me this shirt, this particular shirt. And then he, I was in LA a couple months ago and he came down for an in-person session so he could finally meet me because we've been doing remote work. Um, he lives up north, Northern California. And he's like, I forgot your shirt. So I'm order- I ordered you another one. So he ordered me a gray one and then he shipped me my blue one home. And I loved it because I loved it so much. I was, he was like, oh, I'll get you another one. I was like, no. And anybody that works with me knows that I'm going to tell you the first two things I'm going to tell you is that your two healers are sunlight and steak. Those are like your two, the two biggest healers. Sunlight, whether, whether the sun is out or not, you're still going to get exposed to some sort of infrared, even on a cloudy day. So as long as you're outside giving yourself some microdoses of sunshine, throughout the day but the, my biggest like the, the best time to get sun is as the sun is coming up and as the sun is coming down to help you heal your cells from a mitochondria heal the mitochondria your cells mm-hmm. um and obviously eating steak so i always say <laughs> um one of my favorite things to do is i'll go outside but like on a warmer day with my bare feet, I will sit in the grass with my bare feet in the ground with my steak, eating sun or eating my steak in the sunlight. Also, because when we're eating, uh, like a, especially if we're eating like a high fat meal and we're sitting out in the sunshine, the sunlight does convert our fats into vitamin D on a quicker rate. So it's like the perfect. It was like the perfect healing opportunity to eat your meal outside, grounded, and in front, like in the sun. That's awesome. I love that. Thanks. So where can everybody uh, find your coaching services? I am on Instagram. I'm on, I have two accounts. I have my, you can follow my personal journey on Angelero28, that's A-N-G. L E R R O two eight. That's my personal journey. Or you can find more of my carnivore 
content on my Instagram account, Meat Based Medium. That's spelled just the way it is. Meat, M-E-A-T, based, B-A-S-E-D, medium, M-E-D-I-U-M. And I'm in the process of getting a website built. I'm just kind of going through an expansion right now. So I am rebuilding and rebranding my website. So the when that is up, I will um, be posting that on my Instagram. And if you want to learn more about my journeys in my Instagram accounts, I have some link tree. I have a link tree that has a bunch of my other interviews that I've done, especially um, one that I, I did one in November with Dr. Chafee, and that's on there as well. Awesome. I love that. So do you have any suggestions for somebody that might have autoimmune conditions and they're searching for answers and they don't know what to do and they're, they're contemplating a carnivore diet? Do you have any suggestions for them? Absolutely. Um, I have so many. So I would say two, a couple of things. Um, if you're contemplating a carnivore diet and you have some autoimmune issues, the first thing I would look at is what are your autoimmune symptoms? First of all, because everybody has different symptoms. My first thing I would say is stick with, you know, stick with ruminant animals. I would say to lay off of the pork, chicken, and eggs for the time being until you can get some of your symptoms calmed down. Um, I would also stick with higher fat and moderate protein. Bending, especially because fat, especially if you have like, you know, autoimmune issues, like have a lot of like joint pain or anything like that, then I would definitely focus on a lot of like eating more fat. Um, optimal sleep. I also would say to, again, if you have fewer autoimmune issues consist of histamine issues, then I would also tell you to eat, um, just to limit your ground meat consumption because ground meat is particularly higher. And I would cook all of your meals from frozen and freeze your leftovers. Um, and consume organ meat if you can, particularly kidney, um, either like lamb or goat kidney, they're a little more milder tasting. Um, or you could do liver in small amounts. But liver can sometimes, depending on the person, can produce an autoimmune reaction. So that's why I stick with maybe um, with like kidney, which is high in the DAO supplement, the diamine oxidase supplement um, or enzyme supplement. You could supplement with Dow or you could take that, the, uh, the organ meat. The organ meat is high in that enzyme, which helps break down histamine. Also, you could do sweet breads, which are the pancreas and the thymus, which are also high in the DAO enzyme too. So I would start there and then also make sure that you are keeping your minerals balanced. So like vitamin C, vitamin D, quercetin, um, magnesium, those are things that can be really essential when you have any type of autoimmune issue and um, electrolytes. Once your body balances out, you might not need any of those, but that is just something that I recommend my clients that have autoimmune issues because their body is just like their adrenals are a little more stressed than somebody else's who maybe doesn't have those issues. So you just got to look at kind of everything as a, as a whole, as a whole. Um, and if you are like you, for example, that if you're looking into mold, or a chronic inflammatory response, the first thing I would do is get a mycotoxins test. And um, I would also test for your homocysteine levels. And I'd also do an environmental test, um, like through ERMI or hurts me, just to see if there's anything that you are being exposed to. Um, that would be the the, the two things that I would really look into or the three things. Awesome. Yeah. So where's dairy falling into all this? Yes or no? No, 
Um, gosh, here's the thing with dairy. I'm allergic to dairy. That's like my other major food allergen. You know, I, I have several, but dairy, I'm allergic to casein. It's not a lactose intolerance issue. It's, it's actually a dairy allergy, a casein allergy. Um, I've never really outgrew much. Um, but I believe in it. So I believe in the power of raw dairy. I also believe in the power of A2 dairy. I, I don't think that all dairy is created equally, kind of, you know, same thing with like meat, right? I mean, meat, the meat that you can afford, I get that. But I feel like with dairy, it's a case by case situation. And I, like sometimes right off the bat, I just want to say no dairy. If you don't have access to a good grass fed A2 or a raw dairy farm where you can get raw pasteurized butter or raw unpasteurized butter, I would say to eliminate it. If you only have access to pasteurized dairy, then then don't consume it if you have autoimmune issues. Not in the beginning. Maybe once you do some healing. Um, but if you do, um, there is a pot- and you know there's a potential that raw dairy could actually be very good for you. So it's you know it's a really case by case situation here. And I've because I've seen both. I mean I have seen people that consume raw dairy and their allergies go away and their you know hormones balance out. I've seen miraculous things happen. But I've also seen people that have autoimmune issues and consume dairy and it's like catastrophe. You know, their joints swell. It's just, it really just depends. So Mm -hmm. I think you've got to look at the terrain of your body and what state it's in before you can really decide. So sometimes I just kind of say when in doubt, do without until your body gets to a more regulated state and then we can kind of go from there to decide whether it's a good time or not to reintroduce something back into your diet. Yeah, I had to cut out dairy altogether and cheese because the aged cheese is definitely, those have the higher histamine content in them, can't eat them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what else is really great for histamine, which I know that maybe some people don't even know this, but Fiji water. That's what I drink all the time. (laughs) Yeah. That's my favorite too. water. Me too. Me too. I, um, and I use that as a recommendation to my clients um, because it's super, it, it's super high in silica and silica is actually a binder and it helps bind out toxins from our body. So I, wow. um, I drink about a liter, half a liter to a liter a day of Fiji water. It's so, it's Same so here. powerful. <laughs> yeah. I, it's yeah. the only I water know I drink. I gravitated, I gravitated to, to Fiji and it's like, man, this stuff is, I love this water. I can't get enough of that water. So I don't know if it Amazing. just, my body intuitively went to it or if it's just the mouthfeel, the way that it tastes or what, but. Yeah, it's, I think that we're, we are all intuitive. Like our bodies know what we need. And it sounds funny because it's like, it's just water. How would I know to know? How would I know to go and just <laughs> naturally just drawn to this water? And then I, I think I was the same way until I started. And then I started learning about it. I was like, wow, I just, I just always loved this water. I didn't know it was actually very healing on that, that capacity. I didn't know that it was filled with silica and Till I started treating the Lyme and people were um, were talking about the healing benefits of Fiji water. And I was like, well, I already drink that. That's my favorite water. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. So do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap up? The first, the couple thoughts that come to my mind right now are that if people truly want to heal, that you know, my story, your story, we're no different than anybody else's story. And it's something that I've been really trying to get the message across lately is that we just have to get out of our own head and out of our own way to heal and that it's possible. And that I'm, that we're, nobody's any different than anybody else other than the fact that it starts in the mind. 
Healing starts in the mind. It starts with a decision. And once we make that decision, we become unstoppable. And that allow that to un, that feeling of like really embrace that that part of your of your mind of being unstoppable to lead you into your journey. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that try to tell you what you're doing is wrong, but stay stay true to yourself because at the end of your journey, when you're healthy and happy, this will be, you know, your journey will be someone else's lifeline and allow that to be your motivation to turn your pain into purpose to help someone else. I love that. That's yeah, making the decision, I think, is the, the biggest thing. It was for me. Once I yeah. made that decision and committed, I was all in. And it was just a matter of getting rid of the noise around me, all the naysayers and yeah. detractors and all that sort of thing, mentally blocking that part of it out. And man, it was off to the races from there. And I've never felt better in my entire life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had a lot of, when I was telling people what I was doing, I had a lot of people be like, I don't think this is the best decision. I don't think this is right. And I'm like, well, do you want to bury me? <laughs> right. I mean, what decision do I have right now? I can't eat anything else. And, you know, if you want to, like somebody, I remember this one person was like, I just question your lifespan on this diet. And I said, I question my lifespan without it. So it's, you know. <laughs> Maybe this diet gives me a few more years because I'd rather a few more years than only a few more days or a few more months. I, at that point, I, we weren't sure if I was going to see next week. So, I mean, yeah. how I, I, here I am three years going in. And I also, just for the record, I had a CAC scan done, which is that, what is that, coronary or calcium artery scan? or coronary? I don't yep. know what it is, but CAC scan to measure the block, if I had any blockages since I eat such a high fat carnivore diet and it's zero. Of course it you is. Know? We know that. We know that, but it was just like one more confirmation of like, look, I'm not like, I'm not clogging my arteries, guys. I'm my, my CAC scan, my CAC scan is zero. And it's not the meat that was the issue. That meat wasn't causing the inflammation. And that's something that I deal with all the time. I actually just had a, a, a new client reach out to me potentially. And he was like, well, my numbers are getting better because I cut out the red meat and the alcohol. Well, like, I don't think it was the red meat. I gave you your numbers being right. better. Think it was the alcohol, dear. Right. Yeah, the poison that you were drinking. Yeah, the red meat wasn't the poison. The alcohol was. Yep. But, you know, I was like, to each their own. We'll, that's right. we'll get there. But that's the problem is that everybody what? wants to demonize the meat, but they're not willing to acknowledge the other things that they've been consuming that could be contributing to their inflammation, even if they're not consuming it every day. We all know that when we consume toxic products like alcohol, even if we don't drink every day, one drink can make a huge inflammatory response. You know, mm -hmm. it's how, you know, and, to, and you're saying you're not drinking much, but really, how many drinks are you having? How often are you drinking? Are you really, like, to you, I don't drink that much. And then you actually, well, like, tell me how many drinks you're drinking. I mean, counting it up here, like three a, three a week. Well, three a week times four is 12 a month times 12, you know, like that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that three a week, who's to say that one drink doesn't take your body four days to recover. It, exactly. You know, even though you don't feel it in an acute sense, being drunk or whatever, but, that's or hung right. over. That's right. Yeah. And you're just compounding it over time. Right. Especially if you're already if you already have an, an autoimmune condition that impairs your body to detox and repair and restore, then you're just basically just consuming poison and the body can't 
rid of that poison of itself. So you're just accumulating more inflammation. Yep, absolutely. Well, sure. Angela, I really appreciate you joining me today on the podcast and, you know, getting to hear your story firsthand and the incredible benefits that you've had eating a carnivore slash lion diet. And you're no doubt going to be an inspiration to many. And I'll make sure that I will link all of the, your social media accounts in the description below for everybody so that they can reach out to you if they are in need of some coaching, uh, whether, whether it be for the carnivore diet or in the spiritual area as well. So thank you so much, Angela, for joining me and we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. It was a true pleasure to be a part of your show today. Thank you so, so much. And it was so nice to meet you. I really am grateful for our time. Thank you.